Hey everyone! So welcome to this episode of Quarantine Diaries and today's tutorial is on wire wrapping. So I'm going to give you uh, just a quick basic uh, lesson as to how to start you on wire wrapping. And what is wire wrapping? Well, wire wrapping, this is a uh, an example of wire wrapping and this is also an example of wire wrapping how to wrap beads to chain or to each other to make a piece so the first things first is tools what tools do you need simple you need three things this is a round nose plier this is a flat nose plier these are cutters and your hands that's it and then you need wire so what wire gauge what wire do i buy i'm going to explain that so there's different types of wire gauges um it ranges anywhere from well what i use is mainly 24 to 28 so what you need to know about wire gauges the higher the number the thinner the wire the lower the number the thicker the wire so thin wire is really easy to work thick wire is gonna take some elbow grease so this um, once you start working with wire just by feeling it you can kind of tell so this would be my thinnest wire right here which is 28 28 is very thin so what do I use this for I would use the thinnest wire for example the tourmalines that are very small and delicate um, I would use it something that's not gonna get a lot of use also so um, earrings don't get banged up some things on, on necklaces won't get banged up but if it's gonna be something that's gonna be used and abused you definitely don't want to use 26 because it's gonna be a little bit too thin so um, 28 sorry so this is 26 26 is uh, good for a lot of things and this would be 24 and I'm going to show you a piece where I use all three of them 24 is 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 pretty solid for a lot of things so if you're going to start with anything I would say that 24 gauge is probably your best bet now there's different types of wires too this is half hard so what half hard means that it has you can bend it but it also has it, it'll hold its shape which is why it's so good for this type of beadwork so let me give you an example this chain this necklace okay the one I recently did has three types of wire so this is um, sterling silver same gauges for sterling silver but I'll use three types of wires so for instance these small beads you'll see throughout will be 26 okay um, this is a heavier stone so because it's a heavier stone I use 24 and then here we have the tourmalines so for instance you see these little tourmalines little small ones those small beads I will use the 28 which is the thinnest wire now one thing you need to learn I'm gonna give you don't try to force wire that's too thick into stones I've done that um, I've tried because I didn't have the wire to maybe put for this tourmaline a wire gauge that was too thick and it broke it. So you want to make sure you use the right wire or else you're going to be um, spending money, wasting money on stones and, and being uh, quite sad when they break. All right. And so now I'm going to show you some of the basic ways to wrap and to, to make a wire wrap and also to attach it to chain using a piece that I'm making for myself. Okay, so I've already started the chain, but I'm going to show you how to do it. So I work directly with the wire. I don't cut the wire because what happens if you cut the wire um, before doing this, then you may miscut and you're going to be wasting precious, precious metals. So what I do, and I speak of experience, so what I do is I just put the bead on there. You want to get your flat nose pliers. That's what you're going to be working with. Not your flat nose, the round nose pliers. And I give it about a, a half an inch from the top. Put your bead. You are going to use the, your finger, bend over, flip, Come use the wire to come over, flip again, go under. Okay, and there you have your first one. Now, you're going to give it a half an inch from the other side. I cut. I already know how much to cut. So I cut and I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Now notice this is my tip. This is what I do. 
you need to give it space in between each each little wrap because remember this has to wrap around if you don't have any space it's not gonna wrap so now what do you do I give it about that much and you do the same thing to the other side so you go over turn come all the way over turn it sideways and then you go under and then this is what you have that's your first wire wrap on both sides so then you attach it to your chain and I'm going to show you I am prepared this time how I have already attached this is this is my little rainbow necklace this is the one I'm doing for myself and so I already started it and I have the chain and all the different um, ones I haven't finished it but now I'm going to give you a piece of advice um, somebody asked me why do you leave it open um, I don't wrap the beads until they're all done why sometimes if you make a mistake or you don't like the pattern if you've already wrapped it then that means you're gonna have to cut waste material start again so what I do is I, I set it all up I do it all and at the end I go back and wrap but it's all a personal preference so now I'm gonna show you how you wrap it and this is requires patience while you're wrapping requires patience this is not something you do when you're in a rush um, so it will teach you patience and you need both tools you need the round and you need the flat okay so what you do um, also I'm a very detail oriented person by nature so my wire wraps are very specific I like to wrap the same amount of times on both sides so there is symmetry and so it looks the same um, I don't like sloppy wire wrapping so one two three and then I'll do the other side one two and three and then before I cut I kind of look at it see how it looks and then I adjust okay it's about it's about right okay it's about right see so you have about the same amount of wire on both sides now to cut Ooh, I just dropped something dropping is part of the process you use your cutters another piece of advice when you cut I cut from the top put your finger over the wire otherwise you're gonna have bits of wire flying all over the place and then I have a little place where I put my wire remember don't throw away your scraps and then I don't leave it you don't want to leave it out you just use your flat nose plier to tuck it in you want to always tuck in the wire the last thing you want is any sort of wire poking you or your customers either so once again get the cutters cutters are very important put it over cover with your finger you cut see so here so you have a little bit there just get your flat nose my husband's moving my hands and making sure everything's in and you just kind of tuck it in and there you have number one repeat as many times as needed <laughs> and this is why wire wrapping takes a lot of patience um, and so I'll continue that I'll continue that process throughout um, now I'm going to show you how to wrap a brio, the brio wrap. I had some people ask me that. Not all gems are drilled the same way. Okay, so this is this is these are drilled top to bottom. This is drilled side to side. So it requires a different type of wrapping. Um, this is how I use. So for instance, these are freshwater coin pearls. These are going to be um, some earrings. So I'm going to show you how I do this one. Okay. So here we have, 
and I'll use what wire am I going to use for this one I'm going to use this one no not this one I'm going to use this one okay so this is going to be an earring same concept I'm going to use 20 this is 26 okay you want to give it space uh, maybe about an inch I don't cut you fold and then you fold so you make like you cross like an X all right then you need to give it maybe about uh, two inches of wire and I'll cut two inches then I use my pliers some people use their hands it's all personal preference um, I just like to be more precise so then the long piece comes straight up and then you're going to wrap the little excess around and what does that do that makes sure that that wire is not coming off and it's not going anywhere okay so you wrap it um you just need to i wrap it about three times three three seems to be my magic number for most things if you've noticed All right and then we're going to cut that little piece so we come in cut cut and tuck that's the there that that'll be my terminology cut and tuck all right then here we go so now that's nice and secure so it'll it won't come loose my husband keeps moving my hand so you get your pliers okay these are the round nose pliers and you're going to do the same concept you're going to fold over turn the plier up and over turn sideways again and go under and there you have that okay so i hope you ladies enjoyed that little wire wrapping 101 um it wasn't meant to be an extensive tutorial it was just to meant be some basics to kind of help you get started with the wire wrapping journey if you want to do it and uh let you know about some of the supplies and what to order it's a great time to kind of pick up a new hobby if you want to wire wrapping can help you if you break a necklace you can get a bead uh, reattach it it can help you extend necklaces and it can help you make simple earrings so um, if you want more information YouTube is a great source you can Google wire wrapping and says spend hours looking at videos on there it's something I did when I first started and that's how I kind of picked uh, learned along the way and the mo other thing I'll tell you is just practice 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 it's gonna take patience um, but if you keep at it you'll get really good at it and I uh, hope you ladies enjoyed it uh, Amazon list is linked on my highlights you can see some of the supplies there and also add to cart on Etsy so happy beating ladies <laughs> thank you